Jed Saitao took his life his sophomore year in college. Just 20 years old, he may have suffered from undiagnosed depression. He was dating a girl and she broke up with him that evening. And that was, um, that was the, the trigger that caused him to take his life. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among college students. Within the general population, it is far more common than people realize. Suicide is almost twice as common as homicide in the United States. We have roughly 30,000 suicides a year, and 90% of those are associated with mental illness, most commonly depression. Jed grew up in a close-knit family and was well-liked by his peers. But he sometimes showed signs of anxiety, impulsiveness, and anger that worried his parents. So many people said, oh, don't worry, he'll grow out of it. I knew so-and-so who was like that, and my goodness, it was much worse, and he grew out of it. It was very, very difficult as a parent to make that decision, whether does it really require treatment, and if so, what sorts of treatment? Um, or is it really adolescence that we're seeing, and he's an aggressive adolescent, um, and that's all it is? The Satows had not been informed about depression during Jed's high school years. You have countless parent nights about alcoholism and drugs, but no one really ever brought up to us, and I felt we lived in a fairly sophisticated world. Uh, you know, you might be dealing with depression. Here at the National Institute of Mental Health, Neuroscientists and longtime collaborators, Dr. J. Geed and Dr. B.J. Casey, have taken on the challenge of depression and are beginning to unlock some of the mysteries of the adolescent brain. New evidence shows that anxiety can be an early warning sign for depression. It's rare that you have a depressed child that doesn't have some symptoms of anxiety. Um, and it's also the case that uh, individuals with anxiety have some symptoms of depression. But it's very hard to diagnose during childhood and adolescence too, and I think that's part of the problem is picking up on the symptoms. Using magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, doctors Geed and Casey have discovered dramatic and ongoing changes in the structure and function of the adolescent brain. This was a major breakthrough. Until recently, the adolescent brain was considered to be fully mature by the age of 18. But Dr. Geed's research shows that the brain continues to grow and refine its connections well into adulthood. It really shocked us when we uh, started looking at the brain development that it wasn't 16 or 17 or even 18, but that well into the 20s, the brain was still undergoing dynamic changes, particularly in the front part of the brain involved in regulating emotions and controlling impulses. Dr. Casey's research further revealed that the emotional centers of the brain have the upper hand during this critical period of development when teenagers are exploring their world. And it's not until the prefrontal cortex fully matures in the mid-twenties that greater reasoning and judgment are able to modify the more turbulent thoughts and feelings of adolescence. Hoping to pinpoint a predictable marker in the brain's shifting landscape, Dr. Casey zeroed in on the amygdala an almond-shaped node deep in the brain that plays a critical role in processing emotion. In a simple experiment, anxious adolescents were exposed to pictures of fearful faces. Casey observed that their emotional center was overactive. This heightened emotional state lasted far longer than that of healthy volunteers. The reason why we're interested in this heightened activity in the amygdala in individuals who rate themselves as highly anxious is because in depression and anxiety, elevated activity in this region it has been linked to the disorder. And so this may be a marker for those individuals who will be at risk, and you want to make sure you're monitoring them. And make sure you're treating the right illness, whether it is bipolar illness or depression. Quite often, someone who has manic depressive illness or bipolar disorder, their first episode is depression. And the young person presenting in front of you may look identical. And you don't have a lot of ways to distinguish, are they unipolar or bipolar? And the reason it's so important is that the treatment for depression, namely an antidepressant, could aggravate the bipolar illness. It can trigger manias, it can cause rapid cycling, etc. We made this chart. For the Lipton family, tracking and carefully monitoring heart's moods gave them a clearer picture. 
this daily chart became a tool that would lead to the successful diagnosis of bipolar illness. It's very good for the parents to be giving it a little rating every day, just right on a calendar. Today the irritability was a five, which is like the worst it ever is, or today it was a three, which isn't too bad. And the physician can look it over and make very systematic decisions. So every case should be treated very scientifically, if you will. Here he's feeling really, really bad.